Welcome to anyone who's just joined. Um, today, we're gonna be talking about tips and tricks and strategies for tracking and measuring the success of your fundraising campaigns. So let's get into it. So I'm Isa Hasty. I'm the Senior Content Marketing Manager here at Feather. My goal is to um, help nonprofits better understand how to um, reach their audiences and leverage digital marketing tools to meet their goals, whatever those goals might be. So maybe you're on a marketing team at your organization, or maybe you are on the fundraising or the development side. But either way, if you're here today, it's probably because you're running some type of campaign or multiple campaigns that you'd like to have better visibility into and numbers to prove what's working and what's not. So hopefully you'll get some of these insights um, on the webinar today. And thanks again for joining. Uh, let's dive into the agenda. Um, Cool. So we'll be emailing you the recording in the slide deck after the webinar as always. So look out for that in your email inbox tomorrow morning. If you have any questions as we move through the presentation, just drop them in the chat and I'll get to them as I can. So today we'll be talking about, we'll start with talking about the benefits of data-driven marketing for nonprofits specifically, and there's quite a few. And then we're going to zoom into seven key metrics that I think are really important for you to be paying attention to if you're not already. And of course, there's way more than seven, but these are some of the big ones that I think can have a real impact for your organization and for your work every day. After that, I'm gonna go into some strategies for how to begin tracking and measuring your campaigns. So in that section, I'll provide a simple template for sort of thinking about your goals and your metrics, how to kind of keep your goals and your metrics aligned and keep them realistic. And then I'll explain some of the tools that make it easier to track and report on all of those metrics. And then we'll finish by talking about what to do with all of this data once you have it. So setting up conversion tracking, running reports to compare performance across channels, that's all great, but it's only helpful if you do something with the insights, right? So I'll go over some easy tips for sort of how to think about ways to use this data once you have it so that you can drive growth and impact for your organization. All right. So just some quick context setting before we get into the specifics, um, I wanna talk about sort of, so a lot of the terms and concepts that we'll be talking about today, they apply to any business. So all brands and organizations should measure their marketing campaigns, make improvements based on the data and have clear reporting to show what's working and what's not. Nonprofits need reporting and analytics for all of those same reasons, plus some other ones that I'm gonna get into in just a sec. Um, but first, I just want to define some of these terms so we're all on the same page and kind of put them in a bit of a nonprofit context for you. So analytics refers to the systematic measurement, analysis, and reporting of data to understand how marketing efforts are influencing your organization's goals. So this is important for nonprofits since they often have high revenue goals, but at the same time might have limited budgets and resources to hit those goals. And so tracking and reporting helps keep things on track. It keeps things in, uh, transparent internally. So there's lots of benefits. And then data-driven marketing is a strategy that uses data about your supporters, your donors, volunteers, other audience members to create more personalized campaigns with the goal of driving more impact and a higher return on investment. So later on, we'll get into some of the more specific ways that you can leverage your data to achieve these things. So let's talk about the data or the, the benefits of data-driven marketing for nonprofits specifically. So first, data removes the guesswork and helps you make more educated decisions about your spending. So you can see exactly what's working, what's not working, what channels are performing well, which ones need more of your attention. It allows you to play around with different variables and kind of test new things, but in a way that's supported by data so that you can avoid setbacks, right? You don't wanna just be testing things blindly. And you can also see how your marketing spending is impacting your organization as a whole, which is key to ensuring the sustainability of your organization and of your mission. Another benefit of data-driven marketing is that you can identify trends and get valuable insights on your audience. So by looking at demographic information, online behavior, engagement metrics, you'll get to know your audience even better than you already do. And you'll understand what motivates them, what drives them to click through to your site. And when you understand those things, you can incorporate them more into your, into your campaigns and into your messaging and kind of use them to drive even more impact with your marketing. Um, 
And you can also use this data to create more meaningful audience segments, um, which we'll get into in more detail later on. And you can tweak your messaging to kind of speak more directly to what you're seeing people actually are interested in. The third major benefit, and this one is huge for nonprofits specifically, is the ability to prove the value of your work. So your team's funding probably depends largely on your ability to prove that what you're doing brings real value for your organization. Um, maybe that's bringing in above a certain amount of donations um, for Giving Tuesday or acquiring a certain number of new donors per quarter. Maybe it's increasing attendance to an event or recruiting enough volunteers each month. Um, in many cases, it might be multiple of the things I just mentioned. And so tracking and reporting on all of these initiatives gives you something to point to. So you can say, hey, look, last month we ran a Facebook, um, a Facebook campaign, an email mapping campaign, a geofencing campaign some retargeting campaigns, and a sequence of three email appeals to drive donations. Here's how much we got into donations versus how much we spent versus how much we budgeted. Here's how each channel performed. And we're planning to run more email sequences like this because it drove the most donations. But we also got lots of new web traffic from the geofencing campaign. And then 7% of that traffic ended up making a donation. So we know that worked too. If you can present your data like this to your CEO, your board members, whoever else, whoever else you might be reporting to, they will be more inclined to trust you and keep funding the things that you're working on. And then fourth is increasing transparency and being able to showcase impact. So unlike some other types of organizations, nonprofits have this sort of legal ethical obligation to be transparent about spending. Um, and so if you have to provide annual reports of your financial performance or post financial statements on your website, anything like that, proper tracking and reporting of your marketing and communications initiatives can really help make this easier. So you'll be able to clearly explain how you've earned your revenue and how you're allocating those funds. And then donors also like to know how their contributions are being used. They typically like to know that the money that they're giving to a cause is actually going toward that cause. And so tracking your, you know, your marketing data can make it easier to be honest and clear in your communications with donors about what you're actually doing with the money that they're giving you. All right. So let's get into these key metrics that I want you to be paying attention to. Now, any metrics that you're already tracking are obviously important. So don't stop anything you're already doing if you're finding that it's helpful. But some metrics aren't as crucial as others. And so it's important to understand which ones you definitely need to be looking at. And then anything else on top of that is just added benefit, right? Additional insight. So for example, the number of Instagram followers you have is helpful to know. It might give you some insight into some of into how some of your campaigns are performing. Um, but that's not a metric that tells you how your marketing spend is directly impacting your organization's sustainability. However, metrics like cost per conversion or donor retention rate actually tell you a story about where your budget is going, if it's being spent efficiently, um, what's really resonating with your audience, things like that. So while all metrics are valuable, they're not all created equal. And so especially in the nonprofit world where budgets are tight and you need to do everything you can to spend efficiently, um, you want to make sure that you're focusing on the right numbers. So let's dive into these specific ones. So one high level KPI that you should always track is your overall number of website visitors. So this number will give you a decent idea of whether people are interested in your cause and how effective your website is in search engine optimization or SEO. But a low website traffic rate doesn't necessarily indicate that you have a bad website, right? It could mean that you haven't optimized for SEO or it might mean that your ads aren't pulling their weight and they're not bringing people to your site in the first place. So if your website traffic is low, you wanna start by growing that traffic, which might involve revamping your SEO strategy to show up in search engines, might involve you know, taking a closer look at your ad campaigns or some of your other digital marketing strategies to kind of see where you can make improvements. Um, if your website traffic is already high, that's great. Um, your website is an extremely powerful source of first party data on your audience. So the sooner you can get your traffic up high enough to run retargeting campaigns, and for that, we recommend at least 500 monthly visitors. The sooner you can start running those more impactful campaigns and gathering even more data on your audience as they click through on your ads and they engage with different pages on your site. So what are some ways to monitor your website traffic? So Google Analytics offers, um, offers metrics on this. SEM Rush and other tools like that I know are easy ways to kind of check those high level stats um, quickly. 
Feather also offers this capability. So you can see your overall traffic. So all visitors to your site since you set up the tracking pixel, um, or you can look at month over month and compare different time periods. And then you can also set up custom filters to kind of see how many people have visited specific pages within specific time frames. Um, and you can add filters to get as specific as you want. And so you might want to see, you know, everyone who's visited my donate page in the last two months um, and has also interacted with ads from this ad retargeting campaign that I'm running. And so you can see all of that data with just a few clicks and feather. And then it also gives you the option to turn that group into a segment that you can then target in other campaigns. So you might decide, okay, this you know, series of filters that I just um, put together created this group for me that I think actually might be really valuable to target in a new email campaign or a new ad campaign. And so you just click a button, turn it into a segment, and then you can run with that segment in your marketing. Okay, so second is social media engagement. Um, I'm planning to host another webinar in the near future that dives deeper into social media strategies because I know that that's a big topic that nonprofits appreciate more support around. Um, but just to kind of touch on a few key points here, social media can be a really amazing platform for raising general awareness, finding new donors, um, but your follower numbers don't always equate you know, to donations or conversions. And so you might have thousands of followers on a given platform, but um, you know, are they engaging with your ads? How many people are actually clicking on your posts? Um, who are these people? These are the types of questions that are more meaningful to ask when it comes to your social media strategy and the metrics to look out for kind of de vary depending on the platform. So for Facebook and Instagram, you want to keep an eye on engagement score, um, number of likes, clicks, shares, comments, things like that. For Twitter, you want to look at um, retweets, replies. The, the goal is to focus on interactions and activity, not just the number of followers. <clears throat> So email engagement, you want your email platform to provide all of the standard metrics like opens, clicks, unsubscribes, bounces, things like that. You also want a platform that makes it really easy to track conversions from your emails. So I wanted to show you this Feather campaign, um, this Feather email campaign from a customer. This is Quad City Symphony Orchestra, just to kind of show you the types of metrics you should be looking out for in an email platform. Um, so they were promoting their Harry Potter 6 in concert last summer, and they ran a variety of email and ad campaigns to sell tickets for the concert. You can see this is the first email that they sent promoting it here on the left. Um, and then on the right, I'm going to show you the report from um, this specific email campaign. Um, so as we scroll through, so here at the top, you can kind of see just like a quick view where you have a little thumbnail with the email, subject line, send date, all of these kind of like quick little facts about the email. Then you get into kind of these standard reporting metrics, right? So how many people were targeted, how many sends, bounces, clicks, opens, all that good stuff. You have some visualizations of the data here. You can see who clicked on, um, who engaged with the email, which links were clicked on and how many times. And then here we get to the good stuff. So you can see the, the conversion value and the conversions here. Um, so they were able to track 133 ticket sales and more than $20,000 in revenue back to this one email. Um, so needless to say, this was a super successful campaign. And then they went on to run multiple more email campaigns and ad campaigns um, with the help of insights from, from this email report. Um, and so they ultimately sold 508 tickets to the show and generated almost $75,000 in revenue for this concert. So really great results and really great use of data tracking. So the click-through rates on your ad campaigns are another really important metric um, because they help you understand more about your website traffic and your marketing spend. So for example, if your website traffic is low, it might be because your ads are not performing well and driving people to your site like they should be. Or if your spend rates are high, this might be because you're spending a lot of budget on ads that aren't converting at a high enough rate. So just to show you some of the things that you should be looking for, here you can see um, part of a campaign report in Feather. So this was for an initiative called Give Local 757, which is a 24 hour giving day that the Peninsula Communica Community Foundation um, runs each year to drive donations in May. So this report shows the overall conversion value and number of conversions for the entire initiative. Um, so that's the ad and email campaigns combined. 
um, which you can see were outstanding results here. And then on this third row, you can see the ad performance. And so you can see that they reached 29,000 people with their ads. Um, it's here. And then um, they got 177 clicks um, from the ads, which translates to a 0.61% click-through rate. So when it comes to click-through rate benchmarks, you want to be aiming for at least 0.25% click-through rate on expansion campaigns. So those sort of more top of the funnel campaigns where you're reaching new people who don't know you or don't know you very well. And then you should aim a little higher. So at least 0.35% for nurture and conversion campaigns. So needless to say, a 0.61% click-through rate is a great metric on these ad campaigns. And then you can see that what they did was obviously working because um, they got really good results here. So cost per acquisition is a central KPI for identifying how effective your digital marketing actually is. So you could be seeing high overall traffic and even you know, reaching your conversion goals. But if you're spending huge amounts of money to do that, you're not really effectively raising money for your cause because it's all going back into your marketing and comms strategy. Um, so to calculate this number, you just divide your marketing spend or the total cost of the campaign, including salaries and expenses like that, by the number of donations made in that campaign or the number of volunteers recruited, whatever your conversion um, figure is. And that'll tell you how much you're spending per acquisition or per conversion. And again, there's not really like a benchmark for this. You'll probably be able to tell if it's reasonable or if it's way higher than you want it to be. It's kind of hard to, rec to recommend a CPA because it can vary so much from organization to organization. So just focus on keeping yours low and focus on lowering it over time in ways that work for you. Number six is conversions by channel. So this refers to analyzing how many donations or volunteer signups or other conversions are coming from each platform or channel. So you can see where the growth is really coming from. Um, so you'll see which channels are underperforming. And this is a great opportunity to look more closely at the campaigns you have running on those channels, maybe make some adjustments. Um, which, whichever channels are performing the best might be where you have you know, more supportive audiences and you might wanna consider investing more in those areas. This is also a great way to make a, a plan for hitting your goals. So if you're running behind on a volunteer recruitment initiative or something like that, but you know that Facebook is one of your top performing channels for getting volunteer signups, you can put a little more budget behind your Facebook ads to ensure you hit that target in a shorter time frame. The seventh and final metric I wanna talk about is donor retention rate. So High repeat donor rates typically correlate with higher overall donation amounts over time, which is obviously the goal, but it also indicates that people are forming a long-term connection with your organization and care about your cause. So if your donor retention rates are on the lower side, try running more campaigns targeting past donors. Um, you know, maybe share some uplifting stories about the impact that their donations have had. Um, set up an automated email campaign to send each year on the anniversary of their, their donation, maybe asking them to make it an annual thing. Um, you can target them with ads year round to stay top of mind without bombarding their email inbox. So it's all about staying engaged with them beyond that first donation, because that'll result in more money raised over time and just better, better relationships with your donors, which goes a long way and just more trust in your organization. Okay. So now that you have some ideas about what marketing metrics you should be focusing on, let's talk about some strategies for actually putting these metrics into place. Um, so this is where appropriate goal setting comes in. And we'll also talk about some marketing tools that make it easier to track and measure your campaigns. So I've created this little chart here with some, some examples that hopefully make it feel a little bit more tangible. Um, but a marketing or fundraising campaign should never be created in a metrics first way. You always wanna start with your business objective and yes, it should be measurable and that's where the metrics come in, but focusing on the goal first helps you stay aligned with your organization's goals and helps you come up with a comms plan that actually makes sense. Um, so here we have some examples. Um, so the, this top one here, let's look at this first one. Um, so let's say your business goal is to increase your number of donors, um, sorry, your number of new donors by 15% by the end of the year with no additional budget. So your strategy would probably involve some combination of audience expansion campaigns to promote your cause to net new people, um, which you can do through geofencing, lookalike audiences, paid search, affinity targeting, all kinds of expansion channels. 
Um, and then you would want to turn as many of those audience members into donors, right, as possible. Um, and this involves more personalized targeted campaigns. So that that's like retargeting ads, card abandonment, email campaigns, and your success metrics for this goal um, could look like percent of donor or percent of new donors who interacted with uh, any of these ad or email campaigns. Um, and if you see a certain percent reduction in cost per new donor, that would indicate that you were successful in bringing in those new donors at no increased cost to your organization, which was the original goal. Um, there's a couple more examples here, but I'm actually going to skip ahead because I feel like I'm running a little short on time. But um, like I said, we'll send this out tomorrow morning, the slide deck. So take a close look at this. There's a couple more examples. One is about reaching um, younger donors. And the third one is about um, reaching people with services that you offer um, to try to get more engagement with um, services that you offer to the community. But just remember the takeaway here is that business objective comes first, then comm strategy, and then and the comm strategy should be multi-channel and should be relevant for your target audience, and then your metrics. And this doesn't mean that you shouldn't be checking in on the metrics throughout the campaign, right? So once you hit launch on the campaign, check the metrics as often as you want. Start checking them on day one. You know, you want to make adjustments as you go. You want to see what's working in real time so that you can kind of iterate on those campaigns as they're running to maximize results um, and improve performance. So definitely keep an eye on, on the metrics as you're going, but try to keep everything centralized around what, what is the original goal and how are we gonna make it happen. Another important thing to keep in mind when you're figuring out what metrics to focus on is to think about what type of campaign you're running and what results will realistically come from it. So for example, you know, for audience expansion campaigns, these are usually intended to increase awareness around your cause among new people. Um, and that might be, you know, that might include running some ads on different platforms, highlighting your cause, driving people to an about us page or somewhere else on your site to learn more. The goal of a campaign like this is not to drive a bunch of conversions. If conversions happen, that's great. But this type of campaign is simply meant to increase awareness and web traffic. Um, so ad impressions and clicks will be some of the main metrics you'll want to look at when evaluating an, an expansion campaign. If your campaign is working and many of those people who see your ads are coming to your site, they enter into your reachable audience, right? Which means you can then start to retarget them with more personalized messaging. And maybe eventually they fill out a form and give you their email and then you can start emailing them. And those kinds of campaigns, which are further down the, the donor journey, um, the goal is to actually get them to make a donation or convert in some way. And so for those campaigns, you do want to focus on conversions as, as a success metric. But just to kind of keep things you know, realistic and not have um, unattainable expectations for your, for your campaigns, you want to make sure that you're thinking about what is the goal of this campaign? What can I realistically get in terms of metrics? And just keep your eye on those metrics and the conversions will come. So we talked earlier about some of the tools that help you monitor your higher level web traffic. And we also talked about how your email and ad platforms should make it easy to track all of the standard engagement um, metrics, you know, um, opens, clicks, all that good stuff. But most of all, they should let you track conversions so that you can see exactly which emails and ads are driving donations and driving impact. Um, and running all or at least the majority of your marketing campaigns in one platform really helps provide more seamless conversion tracking and reporting. Um, it makes it easier to see how channels are performing against one another. You can even run ad campaigns based on email engagement and vice versa. Feather is one platform that lets you do all of this in one place. Um, and in a few slides, I'm going to show you a few examples of building segments um, based on the data so you can see you know, how having all of your website activity data in the same place as your email data and your ad and your social media data makes it really easy to run targeted campaigns to smaller segments, um, which improves engagement. So we'll get into some specific um, examples of those segments in just a minute. Um, we also get a lot of users who know they want to use Feather for website tracking and digital advertising, but then they end up also migrating their email marketing over to Feather to get those holistic reporting benefits. And in a lot of cases, they also save on cost. That's a really common reason um, because email is included in your Feather license. And so there's no additional cost for having an email platform and you're not working in multiple platforms. Um, and so I've talked to a few different um, Feather users who run marketing and development at food banks. And they've all said that running their email on Feather just makes things easier, helps them save budget. 
Um, and I've included a couple of quotes here um, talking about that, but you can read that at your leisure tomorrow because I want to get to this last section. So um, you've got the data, now what? So before I get into some of these specific ways that you can actually use the metrics um, that you have once, once you have them to inform your strategies, I wanna emphasize the importance of actually doing this data analysis part. So I hear a lot of nonprofits talking about how they wish they had more time to look closely at the data in their marketing platform and you know have that data guide their future strategies and their campaigns, but that it always just kind of falls to the back burner. And of course, I understand that this is a very real challenge, right? You have limited bandwidth, you need to prioritize the things that are most urgent. Um, but data analysis and actually using your data to make more informed decisions is super crucial for, for growth and for change. Without that part, the data is kind of minimally useful. You know, it might serve those more external facing needs, like showing something tangible to your board, but if you're not activating on what the data tells you, if you're not creating new audience segments, turning off campaigns that are eating up a whole bunch of budget but not producing results, then you're really missing out on a lot of growth potential and potentially wasting a lot of money. So my first tip is simple. It's to do whatever you can to set aside some more time, maybe just start with an hour a week, whatever feels realistic, to kind of really begin looking at what the data is telling you. Um, try A-B testing something new. If you've got a campaign that's been running for months, but it's producing no leads, maybe turn it off or switch up the messaging. Any small tweaks that you can make will be helpful. And then you'll find that over time, you start to rely more on the data and it'll become more natural to, to refer to it when you want to make a decision. Um, so that's my first piece of advice. I know it's easier said than done, but okay. So Let's say you've started tracking all of these metrics and you have some time dedicated to the data analysis part. What do you actually do? Where do you actually begin with all of this data? How do you take the reports and the metrics and turn them into something actionable quickly? So one place to start is to identify what's clearly not working. This is a really easy way to cut, to, to cut costs quickly. Um, maybe you have a LinkedIn ad campaign that's been running in the background for a long time, but the click-through rate has been consistently low. Um, you might consider turning it off if that's an option, or you could switch up the messaging or the graphics to see if that helps. Um, or maybe the click-through rates are decent, but the bounce rate once people hit your website is high, in which case you know that there's some kind of disconnect between the ad that people are seeing and clicking on and the page that they're landing on. So that might mean adjusting the headline or the hero image of the page that you're directing people to, or maybe you change the call to action on the page. So you just have to kind of try different things and see what works. It's also okay to stop doing something if your metrics show you that it's not working and if you feel like you've tried everything you can. Um, it's up to you to decide which channels and platforms make sense for your organization. I'm not here to tell you that one is right or wrong. So just know that it's okay to stop doing something that isn't helping you achieve your goals, even if it's something that you think you're supposed to be doing or that you see others doing. Next up, look for anomalies in the data or other standouts. So this will look like dramatic spikes up or down. Lots of things can affect this. So keep in mind things like seasonality, you know, you might see less engagement, um, during certain parts of the year, but then really high engagement closer to Giving Tuesday or the holiday season or a big event. Um, or let's say that you know you see that one ad campaign has a much higher click-through rate than your other ad campaigns. So you might want to take a look at that and see what's different about it. You know, are there any trends in terms of who's engaging with it or where on the web they're they're coming from? Where on the web are they seeing your ad and clicking through um, on it? This type of analysis can, can really help you get sort of demographic and behavioral insights that your CRM alone just can't provide you. Um, and maybe the, you know, maybe the messaging or the visuals in that campaign are just particularly compelling or eye-catching. So just kind of see what it is about that campaign that's producing those higher results and, and try applying some of that to your other campaigns to see if you can improve the results there as well. Another great way to leverage your data is to create hyper-specific audience segments, um, and your marketing platform should make it easy for you to do this. So like we discussed at the beginning, the more data you have about your audience, the more deeply you'll understand them, and the more deeply you understand them, the more targeted you can get in your marketing. So as you can see here, um, Feather lets you filter for specific subsets of your audience, and you can turn that into a group um, or a segment with just a click of a button down here. So this example is from United Way of Asheville and Boonclum County. And this is showing people who since May 1st have visited the this United Way's website um, from an iPhone. 
So this is a, a hyper-specific segment based on you know, the, the platform that they're coming, the device they're coming from. And you can see that this is um, 2,492 people. Here's another quick example. This is from Quad City Symphony Orchestra, which we saw the email example from before. So this is showing people that have been to their events page more than six times since April 1st. Okay, um, and you can see here that this is almost 34,000 people, and this is obviously a very highly engaged group of people since six visits in two months to the events page indicates a high interest in this organization's events. So you might wanna even do some targeted messaging to a group like this, right? Um, and again, super easy to save this as a group. You just click this button here, and then you can um, target that segment however you'd like. Last but not least, sorry, I've gone over a little bit, but hopefully you're all still with me. Um, when in doubt, test things. So effective marketing and communications is all about testing things to find what works. So if your email open rates dipped recently, try something new with your subject line in the next one. Um, you know, like including a more specific offer or asking a question. See if that helps. If not, try something else. Segmentation can play in here heavily as well. So if people aren't opening your email, it's probably because the subject line isn't resonating but it's hard to resonate with your whole audience in one subject line. But when you send to a smaller, more well-defined segment, you can get a lot more specific in the subject line and in the body copy and in the landing pages that you're directing them to, and this will improve engagement. Um, now let's say your open and click-through rates are actually healthy, but your bounce rate is high on the page that you're sending people to. So like I mentioned before, you know, you wanna think about um, how can I modify the content on this page to better connect with the email content that is resonating, right? So if people are opening your email, clicking through on it, that content is resonating. But if they get to the page on your site and then they bounce, something is going wrong there. And it's probably related to the, the website content. So it might be about the story you're telling. Sometimes it's about the visuals. But continuity is key for delivering that kind of compelling, cohesive brand experience that, that makes sense for people and makes them want to keep engaging. A general rule of thumb when it comes to testing is to try to keep things controlled as possible by changing one thing at a time or one or two small things. This will help you kind of isolate the change that actually ends up making the difference. And um, you know, small incremental changes like this will be more manageable for your team anyway um, than a complete overhaul that might not even produce better results. So um, change one thing at a time, test, test iteratively and see what works. So that wraps things up for today's webinar. It was a short and sweet one. Thank you again for joining. If you found this helpful and you would like to learn a little bit more about how Feather can help your organization track and measure your marketing campaigns, your fundraising efforts, drop a one in the chat and we'll connect you with somebody who can give you a more personalized walkthrough. And if you're already a Feather customer, drop a two in the chat if you'd like your customer success manager to reach out and connect with you about any of the things that we discussed today. So if you're not using Feather, but you're interested in learning more, talking with somebody in a more personalized way, drop a one. And if you're a customer and you wanna to talk to us a little bit more about this, get some help from your CSM, drop a two in the chat. That wraps things up. Thank you guys all so much for joining and I'll see you on the next one.